Alright. Yeah, we in there. And we are recording now. This is the first episode or pilot episode of sh sh Shoot Me Shit with Shank. Today we're sitting here with one of my favorite comedian friends, my boy Andrew Besson here. What's going on, Andrew? Not shit, man. Not shit. Hey, I'm too excited about trying this shit out, man. Y'all don't understand how much work we put in just today trying to get this together. Buying programs and mics and going to Best Buy, just bugging motherfuckers with dumbass questions and shit. I don't know nothing about computers other than how to bootleg a movie. Just telling y'all ahead of time, I don't know how to do anything other than illegal shit on these damn computers. But, um, got a bunch of topics we want to talk about. Um, the first hot topic for me is Bill Cosby. How do you feel about the Bill Cosby situation? Well, my big thing with Bill Cosby is, as a comedian, as a fan of comedy, it really bothers me because Bill Cosby himself is probably one of the best examples of a relatable family, like just story, just story comedy in general. Whether Easily in my top three of best storytelling things ever. Oh, 100%. But Easy. the problem is, if you go back and watch it, it doesn't hold up now knowing what kind of person he is. Like, you used to think, oh, that's just a... That's just Bill Cosby, nice family man, when you find out. Because the thing is, is according to the accusations, he was doing it at that time. Like, it's not like he just started doing it when he got old. He I was mean, doing it back in the day, too. He was probably doing that show on the playground when he was five and shit, nigga. You know what I'm saying? That's great, up. They ain't have fucking, like, GHB and fucking man. the 60s. Hell, maybe he gave him some bitch some fucked up Kool-Aid. I don't know what the fuck they did back then, but I'm just saying, like... This ain't nothing new. Um, all right, here goes my personal thoughts. All right. I know a bunch of people will get mad at me for this. Um, everybody talking about some of these bitches waited 30 years to sit there and say he even snatched and took the pussy. Um, <laughs> I mean, like, seriously, like, 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 for real. Uh, as far as the little Constance case, so, uh, the one little chick right now that he's actually went, uh, got arrested for, him. that happened back in 2004. For one, how stupid is this bitch to get some pussy took by a 68-year-old man at the time? You gotta think, this dude's 78 now, so this dude was damn near 70 then. You don't need superhuman strength when you're date-raping bitches. They can't move. I mean, as long as he can fucking roll that bitch over and lift her legs, I think he's in there. I guess you do gotta fuck. If, damn it, um, alright, either way. <laughs> damn it, um, alright. Either way it goes, back to the bill shit, um... Fucking, I ain't gonna lie, I think Bill did that shit, man. Um, I just do, and the fucked up thing about it is that Bill still my nigga, so I ain't gonna lie to you. He's 78 years, he's 78 years old, he even got away with it for this long. I mean, what the fuck is putting him in jail gonna do now? Honestly. Stop him from selling out theaters? He ain't selling shit no more. I'm pretty sure he was still doing comedy up until he got arrested. I mean, I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure I read an article. No, he was, but right now, the people know that he's been snatching ass for 30, 40 years plus. I mean, that's not really a relatable topic, date rape, Billy. What's with date rape? Oh, yeah. you want my jello pudding pop? Oh, I, I don't know now. I'm just saying, it's not really, he doesn't really have much to talk about now, because you can't take anything seriously about what he says about family, because he's date raping women. Like, uh oh, the, the wife doesn't like to put the fucking... Pudding in the pudding pop. Like, I mean, I mean, nobody gives a fuck. I mean, Bill Cosby's career is done. That's pretty much a rap. I, I don't think going to jail is going to help anything, but that's just my personal Yeah, this is a rap. He's not going to get street cred in the comedy <laughs> circuit. No, not at all. Not at all. That's done. Plus, the one chick had already settled with him out of court back in like 2006 or something. I, I don't understand how she settled out of court got paid, and now the state picking it back up. I don't understand. Like, that's not right. See, I don't think that's not right. I mean, like, I'm sorry that she got raped, but she already settled that. She got paid to not be raped anymore. You know what I mean? Like, he, Bill Cosby pretty much, you know, paid to take that away. I'm not saying he didn't do it, but she shouldn't have, like, it shouldn't be her that comes in. It should be the other 19. You know, like, but whatever, whatever one brings Once it down. Once the bitch took all that money from Bill Cosby, to me, it's not a rape case anymore. He just bought some expensive-ass pussy. All right, well, speaking of expensive-ass pussy, how about fucking uh, Derek Williams from the New York Knicks a few weeks ago getting robbed of seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars in jewelry? From it, he picked up two girls from the meatpacking district, and I use the term girls loosely because the meatpacking district is the, the meatpacking. Yeah, district? that's the, the world's fucking biggest <laughs> trans vestite <laughs> capital. No. So I mean, like, I'm not surprised they took his jewelry. They probably strong armed him. I ain't gonna fret. I'm still like, why the fuck did he? How, how much jewelry say it was he? Seven hundred fifty thousand. Why the fuck you have all that on that one point in time anyway? Think about it, dude. Like, how much you think Derek William makes a year? 
I don't know, he rich. I'm just saying, but like five million. Let's just say five million. He ain't fucking Carmella. You know what I'm saying? Seven hundred fifty thousand is a fifth of his fucking salary. I make thirty thousand dollars a year. A fifth of my salary is yeah, six grand. I could get a fucking. That's like me buying a fucking Rolex presidential. Why the fuck would I have a Rolex if we're making thirty thousand a year with no other income? That's way too much amount of his income per year. Dude, I've been robbed before. And I'm off all, all that little flashy shit now. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you ahead of time. I love jewelry, but I will never have one more than. I ain't gonna say how much, but I'm never gonna have on that much jewelry at one point in time, so fuck that shit. Well, he didn't have it on, it was at his house, but that ain't the point. You shouldn't have that much jewelry sitting around if you're Derek Williams. Carmelo can have $750,000 in jewelry, that's fine. And then Clay Anthony Early, he got fucking uh, shot and robbed outside of a strip club in New York a couple days ago. By who? The dude who shot him, I don't know. I don't think they got a suspect. I mean, like they ain't solved they the case. I mean, maybe they did. I didn't click on the fucking article. I just, like, fucking read the, you know, the headline. I mean, that, that's the two Knicks getting robbed in, like, two weeks. I ain't going for it. I ain't been really paying attention to basketball because I'm an L.A. Laker fan and we fucking suck. All I know is that Kobe's retiring. And I ain't going for it. I'm happy as fuck that he's retiring because maybe we can actually start winning games again. The last person to rob the Knicks that bad was Amari Stoudemire. Amari did get him. Yes, he, he got did. him good. He got him good. Hell, you know all this bad stuff happened to him now, don't you? Because that's they got rid of Jeremy Lin. They should have kept Jeremy Lin, he had God on his side. Oh, come on. He was the Tim Tebow of basketball. The Tim Tebow of basketball. He was. I don't even know what the hell he's doing right now, just like Tim Tebow. I don't know what the hell he's doing right now neither. Probably fixing somebody's computer. <laughs> I don't know what Tim Now, Tim Tebow ain't fixing somebody's computer, but Jeremy Lin is. I don't know what Jeremy Lin doing. Tim yeah. Tebow looks like he's about to sell you a fucking car or something. I guarantee you Tim Tebow's going to have a car dealership in 10 years. I'll lock, lock that in. Jeremy Lin eating some egg foo young somewhere or some shit. Egg foo young. I don't even think Chinese people eat yeah, That's what we eat, egg foo young. I don't even make that in China. Like, you know the fucking Chinese shit we eat isn't what they eat in China. You know I don't know what the hell they eat in China. I ain't been to China. Well, have you ever fucking walked into a Chinese restaurant where all the fucking workers are having their meal? They just got a fucking pile of rice as big as this fucking table. <laughs> and just a, a bunch of meat poured on it. That's all they eat. Ah, uh, shit. Ah, uh, shit. Um, the new Star Wars is a big deal. Oh, boy. Right now. now, I'm going to tell you how to time on it. If y'all haven't watched the movie, stop, stop, this just stop this right now because I'm about to fuck this all up for y'all. Yes, Han Solo fucking died, first and foremost. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. He dead. As a doornail. Now, um, how, how did you think about the movie other than that? Other than that, like, what a fucking lead in. Uh, how did I, <laughs> I think about the movie? Okay, I thought it was a great movie. If I would have seen it independently, or the, the first Star Wars movie I've seen, I'd have been hooked on the franchise for life. Okay, mm -hmm. I, we gotta say that up front. Mm -hmm. But it was a remake of Star Wars A New Hope. I'm, I'm the first person to say that, and I won't be the last person. But goddamn, I could literally, I, I knew, as soon as I saw the goddamn bridge, from one side of the fucking star base to the other, which is pretty much a Death Star that's a planet now, yeah. um, I knew that Han Solo was going to fall off that motherfucker. Like, I would have bet my life that Han Solo fell off that damn bridge. Before he even walked out there, yeah. the moment I saw the bridge, I was like, oh, here's where Han Solo dies. I did think that the movie was very predictable. Um, as far as you saying it's a remake of Part 4, or the first one, Yeah, I agree, man. Pretty much everybody just changed roles. That chick raised the new Luke Skywalker. Mm -hmm. the, one ch uh, the one black dude... Uh, from Finn, where everybody's mad about. He, he's the new Han Solo. He is the new, exactly. He's the new Han Solo. The only difference is that he's gonna fuck Luke this time instead of fucking Leia. <laughs> and it's because um, Luke's got a pussy. Yeah, you got the new R D D two. Oh, I think I said R eight. R eight is the new R two D two. I forgot what his name. Is. The, the, the little dude that be rolling around. Yeah, R eight. I think. Yeah, it's R eight. Whatever his name is. I mean, it's pretty much the same thing all over again, and Han Solo took old Ben's place. Well, you just brought up something to fucking crack me up, okay? A buddy of mine, he's the biggest Star Wars fan I know. Mm -hmm. Biggest Star Wars fan I know. Well, we had a phone conversation before Star Wars come out, and he thought that fucking Finn was going to be a Jedi, and he was fucking pissed. Because, like, I mean, I was like, dude, Mace Windu's already a black Jedi. He's like, I know, I know, but he's like, it's the main character. How can he be a, a Jedi? Like, it's bullshit. So I could see the movie with him. Right. He asked me the word. He was like, he was like, yeah, what do you think of the movie? I loved it. Loved it. Well, I hear him in a discussion with the other guy that we saw the movie with about. Well, they know the true Star Wars fans don't want to see that shit, and that's I was like, what? Someone want to see what shit? I'm not a true Star Wars fan. I don't get. Oh no, but I mean, he said that the fucking they don't want to see fucking Finn fuck Ray, which is the funniest thing. Like he's not. I've never seen him be racist once in his life, but he's such a fucking <laughs> nerd. It takes Star Wars to bring out his racism. Man, I hope Finn fucks that bitch hard as hell against the wall of the Death Star or some shit. I mean, for real, fuck the shit out of that bitch. Fuck that. Well, I mean, like, I'll, I'll give him a little bit of credit because I'm not entirely sure. I mean, like, 
I mean, how did he get hold? Uh, he held the job. I mean, was he held a job? Like, I mean, actually, he gave it up though, which isn't surprising. <laughs> <Shut> up. <laughs> I'm just saying, hell, I hope he sticks his dick so far up in that bitch he gets Jedi powers to me. Okay, <laughs> let them go ahead let them give us a, a, a little Oreo baby. Yeah, but who wants to fuck that bitch anyway? I mean, here's the thing. She's been in the desert for like 10 years. Her fucking pussy probably smells like Dagobah. Yeah, but I bet it's untouched. That's probably that untainted pussy right there. Uh, probably. I mean, like, who's she fucking like those little Exactly. Music? And you see she was doing flips and cartwheels and moving shit with a stick. The bitch can, can control a stick. Oh, yeah. Exactly. I would love for her to control my stick. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. I can see, see that. See, you talking about a stink. Hell, that's what they make water for. I'm pretty sure she does some good pussy under there with some Jedi mind tricks. True, true. I can see it. I can see yeah. it. She, she probably a good light. She probably a good light. Hell, have them motherfucker out in Tatooine or some one of them damn planets buying tampons at 3 in the morning or some shit. Damn, you know what I'm just saying, that's how good that pussy probably is. Nah, shit. The fucking tam the Tatooine or whatever, the fucking air so dry, they probably don't even bleed. <laughs> tough as hell, tough as hell. Um, the Hateful Eight is a, a, another good topic. Right, well, yeah, well, here's the thing. You haven't seen it. I know you haven't seen it. And we're not going to spoil this one because I don't want to spoil the movie for you. But it's fucking amazing. The cinematography is ridiculous. The fucking the music's ridiculous. He got to do the Morricone that did the fucking all the old Sergio Leone westerns like with Clint Eastwood in the 60s. He did those uh -huh. scores. Uh -huh. He did the score for John Carpenter's The Thing with Kurt Russell. Which is supposedly the closest influence to this movie. He made everybody watch the thing. And the, the, the fucking paranoia. And that's another thing. This is the funniest Quentin Tarantino movie of all of them. It's the funniest? It's the funniest. Like, I laughed more it, during this movie. It's than funnier I had. than Django. Well, Django yeah, it's perfect. funnier than Django. Django's yeah. hilarious. And Django's funnier than Django. Dude, hell, dude right? it's funnier than Django. Like, there's yeah. so many jokes. And Walter Goggins, mm -hmm. the dude who plays the fucking, uh, like, it's like a Confederate, like, uh, raider that, uh, that ends up, like, at the cabin or whatever. He's fucking amazing. Of course, Sam Jackson kills it. Like, you know he does it. And Kurt Russell's good. Like, I mean, the movie's just so damn good. You have to watch it, man. Like, I mean, I'm going to check it out because it has Samuel in it. I mean, it's so good. I love anything that Samuel does. Just keeping that 100. I got you. I got you. I love but, anything Samuel does. But you does. saw a good movie that I haven't had a chance to see yet. Chirac. I heard it's good. Oh, man. Um, I don't want to spoil this for anybody either, but Chirac is... Have you ever watched them? Do the right thing. Yeah, I've seen. I've seen the. Do okay, the right thing. when I, Chirac will probably be like the 2015 version. Really. Of do the right thing, but the reason it's so brilliant is because everything is in rhyme. Oh boy. I, I'm just no, you understand. I'm on the theater. I, I, I love rap and and like I like theater. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But like I'm not real big on. I like some musicals. I'm gonna be honest. I'll, I'll admit I like some musicals, but usually like the more like I don't know like. I hate poetry. I like musicals. I like rap. I don't like poetry, and it just sounds too much like poetry, like death comedy jam uh, shit. Okay, like, well, like I feel like there's too many guns in Chicago. Where should I go? Like, you I, know, honestly, I think somebody said that on the movie. Now that you mentioned, shut it. the fuck up. I just made that shit. Up. <laughs> I'm just saying. I want to say somebody said that. R. Kelly has a song on there. That shit's funny as hell. There is no beef. Where is Chief Keith? I said, R. Kelly got a song going to talk about some Stop the Killing in Chicago. That shit. Stop the Killing in Chicago. Step in the name of love. <laughs> this shit's funny as hell, but um, I thought it was a masterpiece. Plus, I, I, I'm a theater nigga anyway. Right? I feel you. Like I said, I took theater in college. Like, I mean, trust me, I took theater in college. But here's the thing, like, and this comes from somebody who took theater in college. That, and, like, don't, but, like, all the homosexual people out there don't take offense to this. I don't mean that these people take it in the butt when I'm saying what I'm about to say. But there is no gayer major in the world than theater. I mean, it's not even like what their, their sexual orientation is. It's just like, even the girls, like everybody is just so gay in theater. And I just can't take it. Like, there's like, <laughs> like I mean, like, and as is that, they're all like, I'm, I'm a nerd. I like Star Wars. I like all kinds of shit. But they're nerd shits to the net. They're all super next level, fucking level three nerds. And like, it's just like, I can't, I couldn't connect with them. Well, I guess that explains why I love theater so much because I ain't gonna front. As a kid, I was confused to see I was in a house full of females and I knew I was a man, but I didn't really know how to be a man. So I'm sitting there watching football, holding a hammer, talking about some dough, a deer, or free one. I'm saying confused. I'm <laughs> I, I mean, I don't even know true stories. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm just saying, I thought it was excellent. Um, Nick Cannon actually plays the lead. 
And they got Nick Cannon playing the hardest nigga alive in this motherfucker. I'm, no, dead, no, that's the only bad thing I got against it, but Nick Cannon, he nailed it. Regardless, it's a great movie. I'll have it. I'll before. watch it. I'll fucking watch it. But like, I, I mean, like, I, I'm not looking forward to it. And it's not because I love Spike Lee. Twenty Fifth Hour is one of my favorite fucking movies. I think that is a masterpiece. I like do the right masterpiece. Thing. I like do the right thing. I fucking love He Got Game. That's probably my favorite basketball movie ever. He Got Game. I love Malcolm X. The Malcolm X movie was excellent. Eh. I mean, but that's not me. I mean, like, I'm well, not, of course you ain't gonna like. Him. Malcolm X over to brother Andrew. I'm sorry. You know, <laughs> I'm down with the cause a little bit. But you know what I mean? Like, I just mean, a like, little bit. Just, it was a good just a little bit. You know what I mean? It was a real good ass I like the Tuskegee Airmen. <laughs> was that a Spike Lee movie? No. Oh, yeah. Okay, I am about to say. Oh, I'm about to say. You fucked up and think of Tuskegee Airmen. <laughs> like, keep like keep good into that shit, though. I mean, there's a couple niggas in that motherfucker, but I mean. Obviously, you know, Airmen. <laughs> Same, but still, um. See, then I found out the Tuskegee experience they just gave a bunch of black dudes gonorrhea and shit. So that got made me think different about the movie. That is some bullshit. That was some bullshit. It's all kind of... It's all kind of... Um, all these black people that have been getting killed by the cops last year. Have yeah. You seen, have you seen how all these in, all these indictments or whatnot, nobody's getting indicted? Because it's fucking... It's fixed. The system's fixed. I mean, like, and that's why I'm glad I'm not black. Let's just be honest. You know what I mean? Like... I don't really care. I mean, like, I understand. Like, I respect cops, especially the ones that do the job properly. Like, I mean, the good probably 30 to 40% that are normal good dudes that do the job mm -hmm. properly. Mm -hmm. And there's 20 to 30% that are kind of dicks, but they're not doing anything re reckless. And then there's probably 10 to 15%, which are probably higher in urban areas. Yeah, like, yeah, that 15 to yeah. 10% uh, is the concentrated mostly in the urban areas. But that are just fucking complete assholes that do what they want. And if they're racist... They're going to perpetuate those racist fucking, like, you know what I mean? Tropes. And here's the thing. Like, you know, they, they are risking their lives out there. And black people are known for violence. And not necessarily rightfully so, but the problem is, is black people don't do necessarily a great job of not perpetuating these views. Have you not seen, like, the brat videos? You know what I'm saying? That's the fucking people. culture. And here's the thing. Like, if the culture wasn't so prevalent, you know what I mean? I'm not saying it's their fault, but they don't do themselves a service there is what I'm saying. That's All the right. issue. Well, I ain't go for a death situation right there is deeper than rap because it has to do with what the media also allows. Exactly. So that's, that's one thing right there because I, I know some black people that do a lot of positive shit, but... Oh, yeah, like, but they don't notice it. They don't notice it. Nobody talks about it. Nobody talks about it. Never on the news. 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 So, um... Like I said, I agree with you. And I ain't go for It's hard being black. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I, I love, love I'm not black. And you know what? I don't... I'm not mad at you for saying it. Well, Chris Rock did a bit where he said, like, you can ask any black person in the world, would they either be rich and black or poor and white? And they'd say poor and white. Yeah, he did say that. He said, nobody wants to trade place with him. And I, he's rich. He did say that. Yeah, he's like, nobody wants to trade place with me and I'm rich. But seriously. Like, you know what I mean? It's just, it's hard being a black person. It's just like the whole, uh, the whole thing about, like, uh, people choose to be gay. That's such horse shit. You're born gay because why the fuck would you choose to deal with that persecution? Right. Speaking on that now, um, I do... Fucking gay people, y'all know I love y'all, but there are some people that I. I'm really not saying choose. there's some that don't choose, but I'm saying 98 percent of the time they're born that way. I ain't go for okay. I ain't gonna lie. I agree with that because I don't think. That, Why would you choose that lifestyle? I don't think too many people choose that lifestyle. Like, would you choose to be black? I mean, no, no, you know now probably. But if you were just like an infant and you saw both paths, I ain't gonna lie. I love being black because of the history of but, it. But you're into it now. Like you've lived it long enough. You've grown to be fond of it. Plus, like, but if you go plus back, I didn't have a choice. I, I you guess, didn't have a choice. I guess if I was born white and then you sit there and say, "Hey, you're 18 now. You want to be? You want to be black? You be black? I probably would have said, "Hell no." Yeah, what, what, what if they treat? What if they treat? This is a great idea for a fucking movie or something. What if they treated mixed kids like the Amish, and they just like lived fucking like the white lifestyle? Then at sixteen, they let them go be black, and if they want to stay black, they just don't come home. And if they want to be white, they come Dude, back home. You just gave me a great idea. But I mean, we do have a camera over here, and I mean, it may not be the best, but we can find a way to make that. I'm just saying, that just came to me just now. Sorry. Yeah, to but we can make that. We can make that possible somehow. That's probably the most fucked up racist thing I've ever said. I'm serious. Like, man, like, yeah. there's gonna be all kinds of fucked up shit. Exactly. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Regardless, and if anybody gets offended, I guess y'all haven't been on my Facebook page too long. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. <laughs> For real. Um. Yeah, shit's fucked up out here. I think it's crazy that all of them are getting off. I really do. I do too. I think it's fucking terrible. And here's the thing, you can't speak out against it. Like, okay, if you're black, you're speaking out against it because it's against black people. If you're white, you're speaking out against it for two reasons, they usually say. Either one, you're just like, you know, it's white guilt and you're just trying to defend black people. Or two, you hate cops. 
Like, there's no fucking middle ground of I think it's fucked up for anybody of any color. Like, the, the, you can't speak out against it and not be... Tarantino, he spoke out against the cops killing black people, and they threatened to, like, fucking pick at his movies and shit, like the New York Police Department. Yo, wait, that's crazy shit. Yeah, it's fucked it's up. crazy idea. Like, it no matter what color you are, you're not allowed to go against the police. It's, you're not allowed to go against the government. You know what I mean? And I'm like, still tripping um, the one... I. I don't want to mess his name up, people, but um, I want to say his name is Eric Garner. You know, the guy up in mm -hmm. New York, you know, I mm -hmm. can't breathe. Just watching that video, that was one of the saddest oh things I've ever God, seen. Oh, my God, it's hard to watch. watch. It's one of the saddest things I've ever seen in my life. I felt sick after I watched it. And I couldn't breathe. Yeah, and... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, people. We, we, you I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. This is a comedy podcast. Yes, and... You gotta understand, we have a different sense of humor than a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? We sit here and try to make people laugh all the time. And a, a, a lot of the fucking time, we laughing harder than y'all because we our minds are just so fucked up now. But yeah. that was a good one anyway. That, that caught me off guard. That was pure timing. That caught me off guard. I was about to that spit, was pure timing. I was about to spit my cords light all over this damn computer, and that would not be a good thing. But, um, you know, that cop didn't get indicted. But the guy who pulled his iPhone or Android out and recorded it, that you got in trouble. Is that not some bullshit? Oh, yeah. We can talk about this shit all fucking day. Like, it's all fucked up, man. Oh, shit's terrible out here. Terrible out here. Um, Did you really pick Simone as our background fucking stand-up? Man, I was watching Mike Epps. That shit stopped. So, yeah, I ain't gonna front. I, I like Simone. Not only is she funny, but... No, I'm not saying she's not funny, but Jesus Christ. They're fucking with tears a little one-sided. I love dick. Look at them big-ass titties, though. Yeah, look at that manly face. She looks like a linebacker. I bet she got that jawbone like a linebacker too. Fuck that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I'm just saying. I, I, I never said I wouldn't fuck her. I'm just saying, like. Yeah. I mean, she probably wouldn't be the worst thing you gonna fuck me neither. No, I'm, I'm not, not at all. I'm about to say, I know I've tackled a few gremlins in my fucking day. <laughs> I'm about to be real, man. Like, I'm not proud of all the ones that I did. But, I, hey. You shouldn't have gave him water after midnight, motherfucker. Hell, I'm just saying, I had a few people I had to kick out by 6 in the morning, and I can't see with the lights, no. That's what I'm saying, if you drink too much after midnight, them fucking mogwies turn into gremlins real quick. Shit, I drink too much every damn night, so that's probably why I got away. I mean, I got so drunk fucking uh, New Year's Eve night, uh, I'm not, probably, I mean, I'm drinking now, but I'm not drinking very much now, and I'm not drinking to get drunk until I go to Rough and Rowdy Friday. That's right, I'm going to Rough and Rowdy. Call me a redneck. I don't care. That shit's fun. I only go on Friday. I don't want to I don't go Saturday when all the winners go. I want to see the people that suck just get the fuck beat out of them. I ain't going for it. That's my fa one of my favorite things. I got to work, so I ain't going to be able to be at either one. Oh, man. But um, I, I, I love the first round of the Tough Man. Because that's what I'm saying. Tough Man, Rough and Rowdy, the first night, Friday night's the best night to go. Yeah, you get a bunch of motherfuckers who don't know what the fuck they doing. And I ain't going for it. Another thing... The Ring one, Girl competition. One thing I love about West Virginia, guys, one thing I love, and it, this rough and rowdy bra, I love seeing rednecks beat the fuck out oh of each other. Oh, my God. It's and this bad. right here is the one no, thing. I, you know what I forgot? I'm about to get on this, and you all should, too. Uh, watch the hype videos, especially if you're going, because then you kind of get invested into how retarded these fighters are. And, like, some of these hype videos are so epically bad that it makes you invested to see either that guy get beat up or that guy win. You know, <laughs> it just depends. <laughs> And then you'll see both, and you're like, oh, that dude's definitely running his mouth. He's going to get his ass whipped. And you know what? You get to see the fight. It's like getting to watch two people talk shit and take him to the parking lot. And guess what? You get a bunch of parking lots right in a row. Word. And it's like going to the bar and just watching fights constantly. I ain't go for it. I ain't seen no hype videos yet. Oh, you got to. You just got to go to Rough, Rough and Rowdy, your Tough Man like YouTube like you channel. on the internet? Yeah, on the YouTube channel. Just go to Tough Man or Rough and Rowdy's YouTube channel, and they'll have a bunch of hype videos. Huh, I'm about to have to check that oh, out. Oh, this is awesome. And check that out in a second, because you don't I, the Green Bay game is actually coming on, so I'm gonna be looking at that. But I got a phone, so I'll look it up. I'll look it up on my phone or something mm -hmm. real quick. But yeah, that's some cool shit. Um, as far as comedy's been going, um, I'm just gonna sit here and you know what I'm saying, big my friend up a little bit. Here we go. My, nah, dude, this right here, like I said, this is my homie. But this guy literally started comedy with the end of August. Yeah, it was July 30th. This is my first time. Okay, I'm July saying. 30th. Okay, well. Dude, he's been at every open mic in the area, period, since that's been in Huntington or Charleston or St. Albans. Hell, he didn't already travel to Parkersburg and Chillicothe a few times. He's already been on stage, what? 32 times. 32 times. I've only been on I don't even say how little I've been on stage. That ain't the fucking point. Dude, this man right here, I always say he has the eye of the tiger. Dude, um, how do you do it? Ah, fuck you. Uh, I'm serious. I mean, honestly, it's just I've wanted to do this for fucking like seven, 
eight years at least, maybe longer, and I've never had the balls to get on stage because it's one of those things that when you have a dream, the moment you try to live it and it fails, it's no longer a dream, it's a reality that's never going to happen. Mm -hmm. And if you never try, it'll always be a dream. Well, one day I was fighting with my ex-girlfriend and like I was just like, eh, you know, well, I want to get out of the house. So I said, fuck it, and I hit up my buddy Lee Hell, and I was like, what do I do? And he's like, go to Mojo's tonight, actually. And I went there, and I went, I did pretty good. Went back to the next Mojo's, which was the next week, because it was weekly at the time, went again, and then the next week, went again. Then I went to bi-weekly, then I went to Black Sheet, then I went to Parkersburg, Black Sheet, Mojo's, and I'll go to every single mic I can. And I try to do new material every time at each mic, which is damn near impossible. Yeah. And not every time's good. And like Black Sheep, I fucking bomb there every goddamn time. The first like eight, seven times, like, you know, I went. And then finally I'm not I'm not killing, but I'm not bombing finally there. Yeah, I got it. And you know what I mean? Like and I've got to you know, I got to open for these comedians from Atlanta that are uh, one of them, Mag Jackson, was on a fucking uh, yeah, he's been on TV America's America. Got Talent, fucking True T V Fox, he's gonna be in the new barbershop movie. And uh, January 14th at the Mardi Gras Casino, 7 to 9 p.m., I'll be there opening for uh, the same four of them, Mag Jackson, Dexter Ferguson, uh, That's Tommy, and uh, Plug fucking uh, goddamn, this little one I can't remember, I just noticed his Plug. Let's just go with Plug. So you said this is January 14th? January 14th, Thursday night, it's 7 or 9 p.m. It's a okay. free show at Mardi Gras Casino at Louis, the club behind the cafe. Definitely trying to check that out. Now, the day before that is our first open mic comedy oh, night shit. at Black Sheep. Yeah. So um, this show is going to be a little different for me because this is my first time actually getting to host an uh, MC. You are MC in that show. I, I, I'm, 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 uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Cody Lambert, who I have a lot of respect for, he asked me to MC this one, so I'm real excited about that. Like I said, this dude's inspiring me right now, so I'm gonna try to do a lot more this year. Cause I'm, I, I don't want to call it laziness, but I, I just need to make more time. I mean, he, I mean, I have a car. He doesn't have a car. It's as simple as that. I feel like if he had a car and a way to get there, he would be doing this. It's not like he doesn't want to. I got to drive first, nigga. Shit. Oh, you ain't gonna drive, man. Oh man, yeah. I just said that shit on the podcast. Now everybody knows. Yeah. You never driven a car. I mean, I've been behind the wheel a few oh, times. Oh, come on, come on. you never driven a car? I mean, we, we gotta fucking... have I driven good? No. You've never driven a car. You, I mean, like... Man, I'm not even good at driving cars on the arcade games back oh, in the day. Uh, dude, I, you I, not I, driven a car? I, I could even play Crazy Taxi right now. We play Crazy Taxi oh right now. I was going to Crazy Taxi for real. Oh, <laughs> I'm blown. Like, this is ridiculous. I'm blown away. Like, what? Lazy niggas. <laughs> can't <laughs> swim, can't drive, can't do nothing. I can't swim. I could swim, but I got good hair, and I don't like getting my hair wet. So that's why I'm just fucking with y'all. But I don't swim. I ain't gonna fuck. You can't I, swim. I, I'm sure I can. I just don't. Oh yeah, I'm sure you can drive. You just don't. I mean, I'm pretty sure I'd get the hang of the fuck. We're, we're gonna teach you to drive. That's 2016 is the year of the shank. He's driving. Yeah, we about to do a lot of shit. This he, he's year. driving before the end of the year. A lot of shit this year. Um. So um, as far as the comedy's been going right now, um. Like special wise, um, who have you been paying attention to here recently? Who, who you been uh, I mean, obviously, uh, Bill Burr should have a special coming out soon. I'm pumped for that. Um, obviously, Bo Burnham should uh, have the Make Happy special coming soon. Pumped for that. Recently, that I've seen, uh, David Tell's Road Work was amazing. Um, fucking, uh, there was another one. Uh, Sam Morell's recent special was decent. Like he had a Comedy Central half hour. It was pretty good. Dude, um, one of my Facebook friends, um, Whitney Hodge, just put me on with this guy named Brent Moore. She, she oh, Brent Moore, he's good. Dude, he has a new special on Netflix. I haven't watched it yet, but I've seen one of his. It's uh, fucking earlier. awesome. It's fucking awesome. It's fucking awesome. I, I watched the last Mike Epps. Ah, uh, fuck. I mean, I lose to. I, I, Mike Epps is a funny motherfucker. I love Mike Epps. I even saw him at the Funny Bone in Huntington. He was really good. But I, I couldn't get through that special. Like, I, heard, I heard also the thing with the Mike, the last Mike Epps special. This was the most prepared I'd ever seen. Would you not agree? Like, you, usually you could tell he's freestyling a lot. Yeah, but yeah, even I will agree with he that. The his, most free, prepared. his freestyles even seemed prepared. Like, his crowd work was the only thing that seemed natural. Like, I mean, it was all natural. I mean, he's a great comedian. He's funny. But for whatever reason, it just didn't grab me like the rest of them. I felt like the crowd just wasn't into it. Yeah, I think the crowd had a lot to do with it. You can tell, like, you know, you've been up there and... When the crowd ain't into you, it, just, it takes a lot out of yeah, you as a performance. Exactly. Well, so, um, other than that, I've been watching a bunch of old shit. Me too. That's what I'm saying. All I've really been doing recently is, uh, honestly, when I drive, 
I have all the Opie and Anthony episodes of Patrice O'Neill on them. I'm, like, they Patrice O'Neill was the fucking dude. Go. They have 145 of them, and I'm on 13 right now, and they're off like three hours a piece. So, I mean, that shows you how long, you know, I'm only listening to them when I'm in the car. So, I mean, it'll take me probably to 2017 to finish all these. But, yeah, I'm going to listen to every single I miss Patrice O'Neill. Oh, my God. Dude, um, you got to think, Patrice O'Neill. A lot of people don't even really know how great he was because he wasn't around long enough. Uh, that guy was man. fucking awesome. Hey, he had the uh, he had the most original views. Like, like people have said this before, but like he had like one of those such original views, such unique views that even if you didn't agree with him, you got his point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He at least still laughed. Yeah. Um, let's see. We're at about thirty some minutes. We're about to wrap this yeah, up. Yeah. Wrap um, this up. Let's see here. Um, I want to go ahead and give a shout out to. Aaron Michael Fox and Eric Hussain, they also have a podcast called For Prosperity. For Posterity. Man, I'm black. I say that word however the fuck I want to. But what is yeah, but for the for listeners, they're going to look for prosperity and they're going to find the fucking thing. For Posterity. Well, we can spell the motherfucker for me if that's what they mean. Right. Anyway. I, this is the kind of guy you get a bootleg from. You want Krampus and you get Krampus the Awakening. It ain't even fucking right Krampus. Dude, you just said Krampus and I found you Krampus. Did, did, did you get to watch a movie that day? No, because I wouldn't fucking got five minutes in this shit and it was fucking some shit you could get like on the sci-fi channel. Well, your mom watched it and said it won't that bad. Well, because my mom will watch anything. She watches shit on the sci-fi channel. <laughs> you, know, your mom, you watch some shitty fucking movies. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, shout out to them. Um, hell, I want to give a shout out to my third world family and um, my boy D.O.C. because he actually helped set all this stuff up for me. So I got to give a shout out to him. Actually, I'm going to be interviewing him about his latest upcoming projects coming up within the next week or so. Um, there's a lot of new music that y'all haven't heard. Andy done heard a lot of times. It's fucking it's good. Amazing. It's fucking good. It's fucking amazing. And I can't wait for y'all to hear that. But, you know, like, so we're going to wrap this up. This is the first episode of Shooting the Shit with Your Boy Shank. I'm Andrew Bass. And I'm your boy Shank, as always. Holla at y'all later. Yeah, we got 32 minutes. I'll just push stop. Go ahead. Stop that. I personally think that's a good episode. I do too.